Ladies and gentlemen, let's right gaming to the com video. We have a couple of interesting pieces of tech news which have popped up. One is AMD's CUDA compiler. Now, <clears throat> it is worth noting before we get super in depth into this, this does not mean that your current Radeon graphics card will be capable of running native CUDA code. In other words, a CUDA based application will not suddenly run on your Radeon card. But AMD are working on a compatibility layer. Now this compatibility layer is known as Heterogeneous Compute Interface for Portability, known to its friends, buddies and co-workers as HIP. That's H-I-P. So the idea here is rather simple. AMD realized that the current OpenCL does not necessarily um, provide all of the support that they would like for developers. Now there's a couple of reasons behind that, but the short version is Despite, despite making rather large improvements to the API as a whole, unfortunately there's still a lot of work to do. There is a lot of stuff to learn, if, particularly if you're a new developer. And honestly, the industry right now has, to be honest with you, adopted CUDA as the kind of de facto way of handling compute. So many people know about CUDA, it's quite ridiculous. So once again, it's not to say that AMD are abandoning OpenCL or anything like that but they do realize it's very important for them to work on other avenues. So AMD will simultaneously be working on its own API and environment, which will be built around the heterogeneous compute compiler, which I guess you could say is kind of similar to their own version of CUDA. So now you've got a bit of background, what does HIP do? Well, essentially X is kind of a, I guess a translation. It acts as like a middle ground. So essentially, if a developer is pretty familiar with creating an application for CUDA, then with HIP, it will allow the developer to have kind of a, I guess, a port code. So yes, they'll still have to do some translation, and they still have to will do some recompiling, and they'll still have to work on the damn thing, but it gives them a pretty good leg up compared to, say, doing things from the very ground up. Now. There are some questions regarding this. Technically, AMD and NVIDIA are still rivals. Back in 2013, if you want to be going back in the history books, NVIDIA did actually start opening up to third-party support to license their technologies, but it's still a bit of an unknown entity of whether it's going to be something NVIDIA are going to be particularly comfortable with, rather. I suspect possibly not. It's a bit different from, let's say, giving Google the code or giving, I don't know, Dell the code and letting them work with it, I'm just throwing some names out there, than a direct rival, because let's face it, essentially AMD are going to be providing what is essentially a GPU that it can do pretty much what NVIDIA's can do, and NVIDIA obviously are going to be rather careful, let's say that, with their uh, technology and secrets. Naturally, since AMD are going to be moving towards compute um, further, in, the, in this case with HSA and HPC, it is naturally a, I guess, foregone conclusion, and you probably guessed this by now anyway, that the Linux support is also going to see an overhaul. Now, AMD's Linux drivers have improved slowly over time, but I guess, as particularly for compute servers, that type of thing, there's only one way to go, and that's up. And that's not to say that, you know, the drivers at the moment are atrocious, but let's face it, if you can improve things, then that's obviously going to be good from the point of view of trying to gain more customers. Before I close things out and go to the second piece that I would like to discuss for today, it is also worth remembering that AMD have been working on this for around seven years, or sorry, four years for HSA. Let me say that again. AMD have been building on this for four years in research and development for HSA. So it's not new. It's not something they've just, you know, potted together in the last couple of minutes or anything like that. They've been working on it for some time now and they are really listening to the customers. But all of this, of course, goes to the GCN architecture itself. And the idea, particularly for their own API that they're working on, is simple. It will leverage the system as is. So, for example, the, their own compute architecture, it should theoretically make those GPUs run pretty much optimally. Now, we all know that AMD will be 
hitting the market with the next generation GPUs, the Arctic Islands, next year. So I guess from the compute type, of, oh, from the compute perspective, we do know that this fits rather nicely into AMD's strategies, where not only, of course, they want to work primarily on the discrete market for gaming, so that would be you buying the Radeon 490 or whatever it's going to end up being called, but they also, once again, want to work on the high-end cards for servers or other um, high-performance areas which, mar which AMD typically are not quite so much in the forefront as NVIDIA at the moment. NVIDIA certainly have domination primarily because, once again, of CUDA. Now, I do want to touch on one other small thing which has popped up. I say small not because it's unimportant, but because A, it's a refresh, and B, we've kind of covered it anyway. But Benchlife are reporting a few extra details concerning Kaby Lake. So KB Lake, as many of you are aware, is essentially a refresh of Skylake. It's not to say that it's a bad thing or anything like that, but we all know that Cannon Lake has seen numerous delays, which obviously kind of sucks, but that's just how, unfortunately, it's working at the moment. But at the moment, Intel are you going to be using KB Lake as kind of a stop gap, stop the gap, excuse me, um, until they can get uh, Canon Lake to pop out. Now, the good news is it's still going to be using the same essential socket. So, yes, it's still going to be LGA1151. However, there will be a, no a new motherboard series released. Now, this is going to be the 200 series known as Union Point. Just for your references, the Skylake is codenamed Sunrise Point. So, what the hell does that mean to you and I? Well, if, for the sake of argument, you decide to jump on KB Lake rather than Skylake, there will be some significant differences with the 200. The main one is that it's going to be primarily I.O. related. So, what that means is that you're going to see an increase of PCIe lanes, um, up 24. PCIe free lanes up from 20, so 24 to 20, not that big of a deal. Six SATA frees, 10 USB frees, um, and from what we're hearing, there's also going to be some support for next generation Optane storage. Now that obviously is Intel's 3D X point memory architecture, which we've heard a hell of a lot on. Obviously, it's next generation uh, memory technology, which means it's going to be able to send data even faster than traditional standard SSDs. How much faster depends on who you're asking, but it's going to be several times faster in comparison to what we've got at the moment. In fact, um, from what Intel's own performance benchmarks are showing, it could be about eight times increase compared to a conventional SSD, which is obviously pretty important. And depending on the environment you're running, eh, you know, that could be kind of something that you might be interested in. I won't go through the entire specifications of KB Lake because it looks like, honestly speaking, it's going to be around a 5 to 10% improvement over Skylake. In other words, if you've got a Skylake system, you're probably not going to be best served to move to KB Lake unless there's a really, really good reason to do so. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, the cat knocks over your desktop and it explodes in a bunch of fire and your only choice is to do a complete rebuild in which case yes you might want to go uh, KB Lake but for the average person who has let's just say for the sake of argument a 6600k right now you're probably best to wait until say Zen or the uh, oh I don't know pretty much anything else comes out but anyway Essentially, most of this is going to be improvements on EDRAM, um, which is obviously going to be cache improvements. That will significantly improve both the GPU performance and also act as a last level cache. Once again, this is supposedly, this has not been confirmed, at least as far as I'm aware, by Intel themselves. But, you know, it could be... Could be a nice, say, uh, could be a nice bonus, depending on the application you're running. Just as a last little nugget of information, we still don't have an exact date of Canon Lake. From what I'm hearing, KB Lake is supposedly going to be released fairly early 
uh, the first half of 2016. Some people are saying f first quarter. Other people are saying a little more into the you know the mid part of the year. But the um, I guess the, uh, the one that everyone's really interested in, Cannon Lake. That supposedly is going to be late 2016. I keep saying supposedly because there are so many delays at the moment. These things have been delayed so many times because obviously we're moving to such small processing manufacturing technologies that it's just kind of a thing. But also the fact that, once again, yes, we're dealing with some leaks from, you know, different websites and Intel's own reports are also being a bit vague. So... At the end of the day, we are just essentially going with some educated guesses in some cases of whether these leaks are fairly accurate. To be fair to Benchlife, their stuff is pretty damn on point, generally speaking. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.